Hello everyone. I'm Rudlisham Madia, Deputy Director of Green Technology Division of MIDA. I'm going to talk about government's facilitation on green technology industry. First of all, let me share with you about MIDA in brief. MIDA is Malaysian Investment Development Authority, which was established in 1967. We are one of the agencies under the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, the government principal agencies that are responsible for the promotion of investment in the manufacturing as well as some selected services sector in Malaysia. As the first point of contact, we have five key functions. Firstly, promotion. We are responsible for the promotion of FDI, NDI in the manufacturing and some selected services sector. We do evaluation of application for manufacturing license, tax incentive, expatriate post, duty exemption, principal hub, as well as some other selected services sector. We also carry out planning function where we do formulation of policies and strategies and initiative for industrial promotion and development. As for the monitoring function, we do licensing and incentive compliance and monitoring mechanism, determination of effective date of incentive and issuance of final certificate. Last but not least, we also assist and handhold companies in the implementation and operation of their projects. MIDA is one of the agencies under the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, along with other agencies such as MATRE, MPC, HDC, MARI, and so on. In order to further enhance MIDA's role, in assisting investors, senior representatives from key government agencies are stationed at MIDA headquarters. They are responsible to advise investors on certain government policies and procedures. These representatives include senior officials from Immigration Department, Custom Department, Labor Department, Telecom Malaysia, and Tenaga National Berhad. We have established a global network of 20 offices covering Asia, Europe, US, and Australia to assist investors who are interested in establishing manufacturing and services projects in Malaysia. Investors are encouraged to discuss their project interests with MIDA overseas offices or MIDA headquarters office in Kuala Lumpur or any point of contact closest to them. We also have 12 state offices in Malaysia to assist investors in implementing their manufacturing projects and services. Next, I will share some investment strategies and policies adopted by the government of Malaysia in attracting investment into Malaysia. Investment agenda of Malaysia mainly focusing on generating quality investment in new and emerging technologies, as well as strategic projects. Quality investment will help create quality jobs that in turn will provide opportunities for us to become a high-income nation. We are very selective in attracting potential investment. We should have special features such as high technology, high value added, knowledge-based industry, and have strong linkages with domestic industries. Moreover, sustainability agenda such as green technology and utilization of natural resources has always been part of the selected element in quality investments. Next, I will share some of our achievements in the economy. Despite global pandemic COVID-19, for the period from 2018 to 2020, 
we successfully extracted approval over US dollar 40 billion in average along the three consecutive years for primary, manufacturing and services sectors in Malaysia. As you can see from the slide, in terms of approved investment in the manufacturing sector, FDI approval has been on the rise for the period from 2016 to 2020. With a robust economy stability, skilled workforce and developed infrastructure, Malaysia remains a preferred economic and trade investment destination for international investors. Country like Japan, US, Singapore, Germany, and the Netherlands have chosen Malaysia for the investment location outside their home countries. The Malaysian government continues to ensure that the company remain an attractive business destination for investment. In our aspiration to achieve a high income economy, we are doubling our effort to attract investments and drive productivity and innovation through political, economic, and regulatory reform. This effort has received worldwide recognition by various international institutions. Moving on to the investment performance of green technology industry. Last year, a total of 635 green investment tech allowance or GITA projects was approved with investment value of 2.38 billion. As for green income tax exemption or GITE services, a total of six applications with total operation expenditure of 22.9 million ringgit Malaysia were approved by MAIDA. We could see majority of the investment in green technology sector were derived from domestic or local investments. In 2020, under the renewable energy sector, solar projects have recorded the highest amount of investment with RM 981.2 million of investment value, followed by biogas and mini hydro over RM 100 million each in both sectors. Energy efficiency sector has also contributed RM 1 billion of investment into the green technology industry in year 2020. Next, I'm going to share with you the tech relief offered by the government of Malaysia to spur the growth of green technology development. This slide shows some history of the development of green agenda in Malaysia. Under the 8th Malaysian plan, the government introduced renewable energy as the fifth fuel with 5% target of RE in energy mix. And during the 9th Malaysia plan, National Renewable Energy Policy and Action Plan was approved by the cabinet in October 2010. The government continues to formulate policies and implement strategy initiative and RE programs to ensure the targets can be met. This can also be seen in the 10 and 11 Malaysia plans with several initiatives in place such as NEM or Net Energy Metering Scheme, Last Case Solar, as well as Green Technology Financing Scheme, GTFS, to facilitate the development of the nation. In 2016, Malaysia pledged to reduce greenhouse gas emission by 45% by 2030. And recently, we have also revised the new target of 31% renewable energy in our installed capacity mix in year 2025. With the tech incentive that I will share later, we are confident to achieve the target set by the government on implementing the green agenda in Malaysia. In budget 2014, the government announced the provision of green investment tech allowance for the purchase of green technology assets or investment in green technology project and green income tax exemption for companies undertaking 
green services. The objective of the incentive are first, to encourage investment in green technology industry on a project basis, either for business purpose or own consumption, and for the adoption of green technology by selected services or system providers. Second, to encourage companies to acquire or purchase assets that have been verified as green technology asset by MGTC. As announced in Budget 2020, the incentive were extended until year 2023, and the government extended green income tax exemption for solar leasing activity. GITA is incentive provided for project basis. A qualifying company can enjoy green investment tax allowance of 100% of qualifying capital expenditure incurred on green technology project for three years from the date of first capex. The allowance can be offset against 70% of total income in the year of assessment. And unutilized allowances can be carried forward until they are fully absorbed. The qualifying activity for GITA includes renewable energy project, for example, solar, biomass, biogas, mini hydro below 30 megawatt, and geothermal. Second, energy efficiency equipment. Third, green building. Fourth, green data center. And fifth, integrated waste management. GITE is incentive provided for green services activities. A qualifying services company can enjoy income tax exemption of 70% on statutory income for qualifying green services, where the period of incentive is for three years, starting from assessment year of the first invoice related to the green technology services issued. And the date of the first invoice shall not be earlier than the date of application received by MIDA. The qualifying activity under green services include renewable energy, energy efficiency, green building, a green data center, green certification and verification, green township, and electrical vehicle services. There is a new incentive introduced under budget 2020, which is income tax exemption of 70% on certain income for solar leasing activity for a period of up to 10 years of assessment. So, what is the criteria for GITA? First, company must be incorporated under the Company Act 2016. Second, company must achieve the following green result, which includes must conserve the use of energy and other form of natural resources or promote the use of renewable energy or recycled waste material resources. Minimize the degradation of the environment or reduce greenhouse emission and promote health and improve environment. Company which has incurred first qualifying capex before application met to MIDA is not eligible for this incentive. For green building incentive, the company must submit the application form together with the provisional green building certificate. For example, design assessment or actual assessment uh, and etc. And the company must make sure that the submission is before the completion of the green project. Besides that, company which has already obtained the final certificate or equivalent is not eligible for this incentive. And the qualifying capital expenditure can be backdated not earlier than three years from the date of application received by MIDA, but not earlier than 1st January 2020. Then move on to the criteria for green income tax exemption. First, company must be incorporated under the Company Act 2016. Second, company must meet the following green services criteria employing at least five full-time employees, including at least two competent personnel in green technology. Company must have green policy related to environmental or sustainability. 
must have documented standard operation procedure to ensure quality of services. 100% income must be derived from the respective green technology services. And company must undertake at least three qualifying activities from the respective green technology sectors. And lastly, for solar leasing, company must be incorporated under the Company Act 2016, has been verified by Sustainable Energy Development Authority or SEDA, and listed under the Registered Solar PV Investor or RPVI Directory. The company must meet the criteria that include employing at least five full-time employees, including at least two competent personnel in green technology. The income must be derived from sale of electricity or leasing activity, and asset must be incorporated in the RPVI balance sheet. Company which has undertaken solar leasing project and issued the first invoice before application met to MIDA is not eligible for this incentive. Then let me highlight how do we apply this GITA and GITE incentive. First, you need to check on your eligibility whether you can apply for ITA or ITE for services or solar leasing. Then, please submit your application via Invest Malaysia portal. Next, MIDA will check on the completion of the information and we will prepare an evaluation report and to be presented to the National Committee on Investment as known as NCI committee. And finally, MIDA will issue an interim approval letter to the company. Next step, you are required to submit application to determine the effective date of incentive and verification process. Company shall proceed to apply with Malaysian Green Technology and Climate Change Center or MGTC to determine the effective date of incentive and validates project complies to green tech criteria. And services activity need to determine the effective date of incentive and assessment year with MGTC. As for solar leasing, companies shall proceed to SEDA to determine the effective date of incentive and assessment year. Once the validation letter from MGTC and SEDA is issued, company can submit tech form to IRB. Now, let's move on to the promoter activities for waste management industry under the Promotion of Investment Act 1986. There are two categories of activities promoted for waste management. The first one is environmental management Recycle of waste. This includes toxic and non-toxic waste, chemical and recream rubber. And this incentive is applicable to all industries. For example, metal and alloy, chemical, textile, ENE, and etc. Second, agriculture waste or agriculture byproducts. Example of activity such as processing sugar cane mill waste, rice mill waste, palm oil mill waste, or estate waste, and etc. to manufacture value-added products, for example, animal feed, fertilizer, and pellets. The incentive offered is either in the form of final status, where the company can enjoy income tax exemption of 70% of the source income, for a period of five years, or investment tax allowance or ITA of 60% on the qualifying capital expenditure incurred within a period of five years, and to be offset again 70% of the salary income. There are conditions imposed for waste recycling activities. First, company is not allowed to import waste and for biomass product, the minimum value added requirement 
is 50%. And managerial, technical, and supervisory, or MTS ratio is 25%. We hope that IGEM 2020 Pocket Talk session on government's facilitation and incentive for green technology project and services will benefit you and your company. For further information, please feel free to contact us. See you soon.